Okay, Mr. Rodriguez, thank you. Uh, being that I have been volunteered to uh, chair this meeting, I would like to start with a call to order at 5.50 p.m. And uh, could we have a roll call, please? Yes. Armando Cisneros? Here. Efrain Sanchez? Ana Sainz? Here. Michael Gutierrez? Manuel Flores? Jesus Rodriguez? Present. Luis Castillo Jr. Here. Richard Geisman. Israel Reina. Here. Okay. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. And then uh, now we will do uh, the pledge to the flag, please. Yes, please, Ryan. Uh, Mr. Chair, in lieu of the fact that Mr. Castillo is a veteran, can he lead us in the uh, pledge yes, of allegiance? Please. I would be honored. Thank you. Yes, sir. Please place the, place the flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. We come now to um, Roman numeral two, general citizen communication. Speaker signed up prior to the meeting being called to order will be each allowed a three-minute allotment to address their concerns regarding items, whether or not they're posted on the agenda. Derogatory remarks will not be permitted. Permitted. Thank you. Do we have speakers tonight? Mr. David Cargo? Honorable Chair, so you are the chair of the meeting, so congratulations and commission members. For the record, my name is David Cordwell. First, there are many good and decent leaders in our community, and I'm glad that each one of you were selected to be on this historic Charter Review Commission. It's been refreshing to hear and read the good things coming from the news media about what y'all have been doing for the betterment of our community, so I appreciate hearing that and reading about y'all in the press and hearing it on the TV news. However, I have not read or heard anything about taxpayers coming before you with any suggested changes. So Melly Herford and I decided we would go out to the public and ask them, what would you like to see changed in our city charter? We compiled the 26 suggested changes which we're presenting and delivering to you this evening and requesting that this commission discuss, discuss each item with possible action at your next meeting. I will now start with the first half of them, and then Melly will come forward with her comments and complete the other half of them. And if some of them duplicate maybe what y'all have already covered, which I hope they do, if it is, it's a sign that the public concern matches and confirms your concern. All right, I'll start with number one. I create an ordinance to convert the Charter Revision Commission to a quasi-judicial independent commission. <clears throat> All approved proposed changes to the charter would go straight to the ballot bypassing city council. You would have your own independent attorney. You would have your own staff. You would have your own operating budget. Number two, change the ethics ordinance to convert the ethics commission to a quasi-judicial board independent commission, identical to what I just said about this one right here. So whatever the ethics commission would do, it would go straight to the voters. They would make the change. Number three, create at least two at-large positions on the city council. Now's the right time, more so because we're going into the census, the 2020 census. Number four, create a section to either eliminate or limit the amount of discretionary funds given to each council member. Today, it's about $500,000. If not eliminated, then mandate preparation of written guidelines on the purpose and limited use of these funds. Number five, Create a section to either eliminate or limit the amount of printing allowance given to each council member. I think that's around $20,000. If not eliminated, then mandate preparation of written guidelines for the use of those funds. Number six, the same thing. Create a section to either eliminate or limit the promotional allowance that each council member gets. That's about $10,000. Number seven, change recall of elected officials to 10% of the voters in the previous election. Number eight, Create a mandate to stop and convert the sports venue sales tax to economic development sales tax. Number nine, create a section to stipulate consequences, penalties for violating city charter by employees and elected officials. Number 10, create a section that stipulates consequences, penalties 
for violating city code of ethics by employees and elected officials. Number 11, create a pledge for every elected official and every new employee to read and sign. This is not oath of office, this is a pledge. Number 12, change the means of determining the salary and providing salary increases to each council member from the ordinance method to the voter referendum method. In this same proposed section, include language that the city council cannot give themselves any money for anything without a voter referendum. Number 13, create a section to reduce and limit other benefit allowances such as phone, currently $150 a month, and vehicles, that's about $750 a month, that are given to each council member via ordinance and written guidelines. City to issue a phone to each council member at a lower expense, much lower than $150, and lower the vehicle allowance to $300 per month for each council <coughs> member. I thank you for allowing me to present the first half of them. At this time, uh, Ms. Herford will complete the presentation. Thank you for allowing the citizens to come before you and share their suggested. Thank you. Mr. Sure. I have a question for uh, Mr. Cardwell. Yes. Uh, go ahead. You may question Mr. Cardwell. Uh, you said you had surveyed or taken a poll of citizens from Laredo. What methodology did you use to take that survey? There's many different means. At church, meeting parishioners, coffee shops. I make several coffee shops. We have Facebook where people message us. People have sent any means, telephone calls, any means that people have communicated with us. There are times when we didn't even walk up to you and say, what would you like, James? They approached us. So was, there's many yeah, things. This is, not, the, this is not a formal survey where we went out and paid $25,000 to conduct it. This is just citizens, public citizens, trying to get information since they were not coming before you. Oh, I understand that, but yeah. I'm asking you who you, re you reached out to. You know, it, it's important who you reach out to and where, right? A diverse, so maybe I went to my a diverse church, I would say know? they were diverse, diverse group of people, all the way from, <clears throat> I'm thinking now of the people that I've talked to, a single uh, mother with kids, uh, people on limited income, people living paycheck to paycheck, uh, and I've also spoken to people that own businesses that are concerned about their business. So it's a, a very diverse group. Yeah. May, may I ask, did you make a record of those conversations or some memorandum regarding No, the all I did is that? we took them down on paper every time we met. They actually articulated those positions that you read off? Yes. Interesting. It is, it is very interesting. Very interesting. It, it, is very, it is very interesting. I really question that that is the way it occurred. But anyway, interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, it is interesting since some of these only failed 49% to 51% at election four years ago. So thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Cardwell. Ms. Uh, Hereford. Good evening, commissioners, and thank you so much for serving our community by sharing of your time in this very important uh, work that you do to amend this important document for the rules of engagement with our city government. As you know, we always like to engage the public in an effort that they become informed about the issues that impact all of us. And with this in mind, David and I compile these suggestions given to us by taxpayers of our community, and this is where I will begin. Eliminate the lined out words in this section, section 3.05, powers and duties of the city manager. Number nine, shall perform each of so perform such other duties as are specified in this charter and you line out or may be required by the city council. Number 15, create a section to eliminate the current 750 monthly allowance for a home office use. Include in that section that each council member will be given a free office in a city recreational center in their respective districts. Number 16, create a section that defines the use of supplemental agendas as defined in the Texas government code. The Laredo City Council should immediately stop using these types of agendas unless they clearly identify the emergency or urgent public necessity in the notice or supplemental notice under this section in the Texas Attorney General's Open Meetings Handbook. Number 17, replace 2.06 investigation <clears throat> with the following language. 
The council shall have the express power to inquire into the official conduct of any department, division, agency, office, officer, or elected official or employee of the city, and for that purpose shall have the power to administer oaths, subpoena witnesses, compel the production of books, papers, and other evidence, evidence material to the inquiry, refusal to attend and testify or to produce books, papers, and other evidence material to the inquiry shall result in the forfeiture of any office, employment, emolument, or contract then accruing to the person so refusing. The council may provide by ordinance additional penalties for contempt in failing or refusing to obey any such subpoena to produce any such books, papers, or other evidence and shall have the power to punish any such contempt in the manner provided by such ordinance. Number 18, make this section enforceable and specify penalties. Section 2.04, vacancies, forfeiture of office, filling of vacancies. Number three, is convicted of a crime involving moral turpitude or felony. Number 19, create the section or add a section with specified penalties regarding council members that do not reside in the district they were elected to serve. This is to include forfeiture of office as a minimum. Number 20, eliminate or prepare and implement written procedures, guidelines, duties, and responsibilities for the assistance assigned to council members. Procedures that will clearly state that assistance cannot be used for personal errands or personal family errands. Also, assistance will not be allowed to accompany council members on their out of city, out of state, or out of the nation trips, unless the reasoning and justification are explained to the public prior to the trip. Number 21, create a travel section that council members will be limited to two trips, one to Austin and one to Washington, D.C., <clears throat> excuse me, per year. 22, change the charter so that the city attorney and the city secretary will be <coughs> elected offices. 23, eliminate the newly created retirement benefits program, <clears throat> excuse me, for the city council. If not eliminated, then create a section with written procedures on how the city council's minimum required 1,000 work hours will be documented for public record. 24, change campaign finance reform that if a council member votes for a union contract or developers or special interests, he or she cannot receive any monetary or in-kind contributions. If they violate this clause, they must vacate their position immediately without any action from the council or the city manager. All other donations are, should be limited to $250. 25, create and change section that random drug tests will be taken once every two years for every city employee and all city elected officials. And number 26, create a section that requires that to serve on a city council, the member must be a land and homeowner in the city of Laredo with their property listed on the Webb County Appraisal District's website. Also, this section would require the same from anyone that serves on any city commission, committee, ad hoc committee, and board that deals with property, land, buildings, zoning, fees, etc. Thank you very much for allowing me the privilege to share these with you. Thank you, Ms. Herford. Uh, would you Sir, mind uh, okay. entertaining some uh, comments or questions from Mr. Reina? He's raising his hand. Okay. So, uh, for, for the record, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Ms. Herford. Millie Herford, right? Ms. Millie Herford? Yes. Uh, just a question. Uh, uh, did you all come together and you Mr. Caldwell? Is that well? Because when the people gave us, you know, they tell you one word. Okay, we but need. I'm to... asking you whether you all are together or you're as here as in, independently as citizens. Before well, that. well, I have to tell you, Mr. Lena, it seems like we're like three one one. They see us come before the city council, so everyone's calling us. Okay, to, hey, tell them this and tell them that, and then they get angry when we don't even. Well, come. let me ask you then the question this way: uh, Are you part of a group here before the? No. Okay. I'm here no to group? represent the taxpayers that trusted me with this, is this not the information. the resurrection of uh, MLF moving Laredo forward? No, I'm not with moving Laredo forward. This question. Okay. May I clear that up? 
Uh, yes, uh, you go ahead and... Uh, I'd like to clear that up since it was brought up. Say your name again, please, Mr. For the record, my name is David Cardwell. Thank you. ML, MLF, Moving Laredo Forward. I was a chairman of that organization back in 2016. Then I later became the campaign <coughs> treasurer. We prepared five proposals that were on the ballot. We got over 10,000 signatures. We only needed less than 6,000. 8,000 and some odd of them were verified as good signatures. After we went through hey, the Mr. election. Mr. Chair, I object to that you know, uh, soapbox declaration okay. by Mr. All right. Paul. All right. The question, uh, only question was whether they were here as a member of a group. Okay. And, and I, I, um, um, that was it. That, but I believe, I, I believe uh, he was trying to clarify. Yeah. I'll make it short. Well, I mean, he's going into this. No, no, I'll make it short. I'll make it short. I'll make it short. I'll make it short. Uh, Further, it's not moving big. Laredo forward was ended. No more financial reports. We make nothing. We terminated it after the election. It does not exist. That was the question. Thank you. There you go. Mr. Caso. Poncho Caso. For the, for the record, my name is Poncho Caso. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, Chairman, members of the Commission. Uh, I represent myself, yes. and I also represent a group that I have on social media on Facebook uh, called CIVIC, which is an acronym for Citizens Initiative for Ver Veritas and Informed Communities. And I have a quite a big of following. And I've been writing commentaries for the last year. Yes. So I've got about over 150 commentaries. And you can, it, you know, I put, I discuss all kinds of issues and I put evidence in. <clears throat> but the reason I'm here is because your chairman, who's not present today, Mr. Flores, George Flores, he invited me because he's been engaging with me on social media, telling me, well, why don't you come before the commission and present your, your, you know, your, your propositions that you're proposing. So I have seven propositions, you know, and I told him, well, if I come before you all, what's going to happen is that you're basically just a rubber stamp commission because right. you all get appointed by the, the council. And I've been on the council, so I know how it works. And he goes, no, no, we're independent thinkers and, you know, we're, we're going to make our own decision. I said, well, even if you all were to pass some of my props and you move it to the city council, I know the city council is not going to, right. they'll never see the light of day. So regardless of what happens here, and I'm going to present them to you all, and whether they make it out of this commission and go to the, to the uh, city council, I'm still going to pursue it on the streets and I will get the signatures. I'll get the 7,000. It's actually, I need about 6,500, but I'll go for 10 and I will get them because when I fight a cause, I usually get what I want and, because I'm persistent. And I know most people are going to support my props, and they already do because I've talked to quite a bit of folks. You know, being on the council, I have a huge network. So to answer your question, do I do any polling? I don't have to. I know the polls. I, I, have, I haven't asked you any questions. I know. Well, you were asking the previous. You know. Yeah, but I haven't asked you. Yeah. Any questions. Well, like just to answer it, I mean, I don't need to. I know the polls of this community. I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, the the first prop community. that I have. Yes, three minutes, Mr. Chair. Three minutes. The, the, the first. Well, at well, least let me are, finish my he prop. Does have three minutes, he has three minutes. We, we can allow extra time. Being that we've been inviting the public to come and we have never had anybody to show up, and today we do, so I so think we should take I only got seven, they have 20. Oh, you know. oh, I'll make them fast. Okay. I only have seven, it's not like I, they had 20 or more. Okay, thank you. The first one that I have is to amend Article 2 of the city charter, which is prohibitions. And what I want to do is take away the retirement benefits. Completely take the retirement benefits away. They have no business having retirement. So that's the first one. You know, I'm not going to bother reading it to you. The second one is also amending chart, uh, Article 2, prohibitions. And that means that you cannot have double dipping. You cannot have a council member who's working for the county and getting paid by the city of, but as a council. It's double dipping. It's wrong on so many different levels, especially when they're going to get a pension. And now that they pass themselves a pension here, they're going to get double pension. So that's double dipping. The other thing is not not to have dual office because you have currently right now a city councilman uh, that is also the, the chair of the Democratic sure. Party. And that's just a huge conflict of interest. So that we need to put it, do away with that. And then the fifth proposition is to amend Article uh, 5, and that's under financial procedures, and that's to completely eliminate discretionary funding, priority funding, take it away from none, not even 50,000. We, we have cookie cutter policy that's going on right now. They borrow four million every year. That's 20 million in, 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 in four years. 
You're, you could use that money on so many other projects if you do it as a community, instead of buying bronzes and paintings and doing whatever. And I have proof to, you know, I have all the documentation what they do with the money. So it's not like I'm making it up. So just completely take it away from them. They're using it to stay in power an extra four years. And then the, the proposition number six is to uh, amend Article 5 again, financial procedures. And that is regarding real estate acquisitions, which the county's been doing it. Uh, the city just did it, and that is to prohibit from purchasing any property for more than fair market value, assessed value, or the average of the last five years of assessments, whichever is lesser. Because what they did with the HEB, which I will prove in the court of law in a couple of weeks, they, they, they went over there and they flipped it, and they made a $1.2 million transaction in less than two weeks, which is wrong. Real estate doesn't appreciate one million dollars in two weeks and the citizens are paying for that they're making us poor and it's wrong so this way you will end all all this well you took an of uh, 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 uh you went and you did an uh an evaluation of the property it doesn't matter you, if you pass this ordinance you're gonna you're gonna make them pay fair market value instead of what's been going on and the last prop that i have which is probably the flagship you know prop and it's going to be the anchor, and it's going to realign the budget big time. After Abbott's, Abbott's caps cut kick in this coming year, I don't know what the council's going to do, but if this prop passes, it's going to change everything. It's going to tighten their belt, like they, and you're going to have to hire a really good city manager to make ends meet. But that's to give the 65-year-olds a 100% exemption, and that'll take out $4.6 million, about $5 million out of the budget that you're not gonna have anymore. But at least you're not gonna be floating $4 million every year on discretionary funding, which yes, is what they're doing right now. Yes. They're borrowing money every year. Well, that'll be the fiscal impact. We get that $4 million you're not borrowing, we're gonna give it to the, to the elderly of, the, of this community. Because I think it's wrong, that's my philosophy, to keep paying taxes for the rest of your life on your homestead, especially when you don't have children anymore, and you're still paying the school tax, and the school tax is much higher than the city and county tax, so at least we need to get some folks a break. Because not only do you have the brain drain right now where you have a lot of young kids leaving, as soon as the kids leave and they have children, guess what happens? The parents are leaving too. Yeah. And you're having a huge drain on this community. So with the 65-year-olds, that's going to be the anchor, and I can tell you right now that that was going to pass with flying colors, and it's going to bring on all the others. Uh, so that's what I'm working on. And, you know, I, I just wanted to come here and share it. I'll give you all a copy. I wanted to share it with, with Judge Flores. And uh, basically, uh, you know, see it. Maybe you all will consider hunting him over. The, the, uh, Thank you very much. To the, uh, to the council. And at least what you can do, you can draw the line in the sand. Because you can see right there and then who's with the people and who's against the people. Even if they don't pass out a City Council, let's see how they vote on it. Do it. Let's see how they're going to vote on it. And you'll find out who's who. You will find out exactly who's with the people and who's not. So anyway, I want to thank you all for the opportunity. And uh, if you all, you know, want me to come back or when the judge comes returns, you know, I'm willing to discuss it with him. But, uh, but that's what I'm, you know, working on and I'm going to pursue it. And I want to thank you all. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. To Thank you. Just thanks. Bobby. And uh, I want to. Mr. Again, Chair, did we get submissions, written submissions from Mr. Caldwell and Ms. Uh, that we, uh, he Mr. gave you all a copy, correct? Yes. Both, both uh, Mr. Castle and Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if, can you please uh, make it a point to make copies and let us all have a, a copy of each? Okay, and I want to go ahead and thank you all three again for being. We've, we've been saying since the first time we met, we've been. Uh, trying to welcome people or, or invite them, and nobody has come. So I understand some of the suggestions might be controversial, but they deserve a discussion. So I understand Mr. Reina had some reservations about it, but uh, especially, you know, personally, I want to thank you for being here, and I'm sure we're all, you know, glad that to have somebody participate. Mr. Chair, I, just for the record, I have no reservations about having citizens, all citizens of whatever color, you know, and strike okay, come here correct. and engage, you know, their public officials, their representatives here correct. on this important, and this important commission. I mean, this is the charter we're talking about. And so, you know, I'd be the first person to go to fight, you know, the streets for that right of the people to, to have 
to be able to petition their government for redress of grievances, to be able to have enjoy free speech, you know, to have be allowed to speak, amply speak, you know, uh, at a forum such as this one. I mean, but we have to use the same damn rule for everybody. Yeah. You know, and you know, I've seen my compañeros and compañeras be cut off after three minutes, you know, when they're trying to speak out on matters of importance, <coughs> of, of public importance, of, of public concern. You know, and, and we can't have a double standard. That's all I, that's the only thing I was objecting to. Well, okay? perhaps, So from yeah. here, no, no, let me finish. Okay. If we're going to use this standard, then we're going to do it with everybody who comes here, right? So, and I'm not here an objection for you all when we have compañeros and compañeras come here mm -hmm. to speak a different, sing a different tune or dance a different song, you know, and then you try to cut them off. Because no, I will I go to the streets I understand that. it has to be the same for everybody. So, yeah, I do appreciate that aspect of it. Mr. Rodriguez? I also would like to thank uh, the three of you for coming in today. Like Mr. Cisneros says, you're the only people that have shown up, and we've been already doing this for wow, so we're really a year. Months. And you're the first ones wow. in since, a year. Since July. And every, uh, <coughs> at every meeting, we, we tell the press, please uh, pass the word on to the public that for, for the public to come in and express their, their desires as to what uh, changes or things to, to keep in the charter. So you're the first, and thank you for taking the time and effort to come before us. It's, it's appreciated, at least on my, on my part. And I'm sure on everybody's uh, part Sounds here that, sure. that a, we appreciate the fact that you're here. If I may, you. I simply want to say thank you all for coming. I echo the sentiments that Mr. Cisneros and Rodriguez have, have just discussed. And I realize also Mr. Reina, Reina having his point. Uh, we've been inviting as the chairman just indicated, people to come over. And I I, uh, I did want to uh, mention, Mr. Cartwell, that uh, some of the items that you brought up, at least I know we've discussed. Sure. And I'm glad that we're on the same page, at least, on, on some of the items. But thank you again, all three of you. And just one, one last word. Um, as far as I know, all you do it all, just because you it feels something that is incumbent on you to try to improve our, our community. So, I mean, nobody's paying you or anything. So that says, that says a lot more than, than we can say. So thank you. So how do you know that? How do you know that nobody's paying you? Because I can stand up and raise my hand. Well, I'm, just, I'm, just ask, I'm just saying that. You're saying uh, that. I you happen to know Ms. Herford and Mr. Talk about what? About. You know they're not being paid? <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a matter of fact. you <laughs> 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 a survey to compile the... You know, but you don't know that they are being paid well, either, I'm right? Not, I'm not saying they are. I'm we're saying, how paid, does he know? We're not paid lobbyists. <laughs> I'm, ask, I'm asking the chair, if you don't mind, how he knows without even, you know, having met with you, right? Why they're, how, they're not being paid. I, I, I stand by what I said, and so I don't so think I need... You, said, I need you said you knew beforehand that they weren't being paid. <laughs> well, I know uh, Mr. Cardwell and Ms. Nelly Hereford, and I have joined them. Oh, in, so you're, so you're already out, a part of their... In speaking out for the taxpayers before, and I know personally I haven't been paid, well, and I, Chair, I know ask, they haven't. So, your temporary chair, let me ask you this: uh, Were you part of writing those or taking those positions? Uh, no, not I have not spoken to them in uh, probably a month. You weren't or month. interviewed for this to, for the articulation of these positions today. Uh, I have not spoken to either one of them for quite a while. Can I ask you the same question? No, he has not. We haven't spoken to him in probably over a month. Well, all right. That the, the next question was for you. You've answered that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Federal. Okay. For a point of legal. Wait. We have the le oh, go ahead. What? Yes, go ahead. He's only part. No, I mean, you, you mentioned his name and you said I was yes, Mr. Federal. Yes, and so I thought you were asking me to, to come up to the answer. podium, Mr. Rayner. I, I just, I was, at, I was addressing the chair. Okay. And then well, you spoke if about I would have been a paid lobbyist, we know that I would have been registered with the city of Laredo. And I'm not registered with the city of Laredo, and I'm not a paid lobbyist. You'd have to be registered, correct? Okay, thank you, and I'm not. Thank you. Okay. And I have more, I have new gained respect for the chairman because, you know, he has to <laughs> keep the meeting in order, right? So I know it's just e easier said than done. So I appreciate all of us, all of you for being here. Thank you again. Okay, so now uh, we move on to the next item, which is the approval of minutes. Approval of minutes from the December the 4th, 2019 regular meeting. Do I have a motion to approve those uh, minutes? 
from anyone? Mr. Rodriguez, any second? I'll second. Mr. Reyna. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. Uh, item number four, discussion and possible action items. The commission may discuss and take action on the following agenda items related to the city charter. Letter A, proposed amendment to section 12.04, parenthesis nepotism. Okay. Uh, can you, uh, legal, legal, can you elaborate more specifically on what the uh, item that the council wanted us to consider <coughs> was, uh, the wording of that item? Sure, so um, I believe the last time Valeria Reyes, the assistant city attorney, was here helping you guys with this uh, item. Yes. Um, I believe that staff recommended that this provision be amended to allow I believe they wanted to expand the uh, the ability for more people to serve on the committees without being uh, infringed upon by nepotism. Yes, exactly. That's essentially yes. what yeah. it was. Yes. And so we have a list of the of the rulemaking com uh, committees, and uh, what the council wants us to do is to expand or to eliminate the nepotism rules for for these uh, six committees. Board of Adjustment. So no, I, I think the uh, oh. I think the commission wanted some clarification as to which committees were rulemaking uh, oh, committees and those that were simply advisory. Okay, but I do recall that they wanted this exception to make, be made only to uh, rulemaking committees, which is the first six committees that are on the list. Uh, anyone, anybody else wants to uh, state what they recall from this item? Mr. Rodriguez, do you read? Uh, I think uh, if I'm not understanding what I don't want to speak for you, but but you said that all committees should have because even this one, even though it's not a uh, falls under that classification, but we have certain influence uh, by by our actions here. So uh, I think the agreement was, or I understand it, that that um, the rules should apply for all committee members of all committees. Um, yes, Mr. That, Reyna? That, that is a fair okay. statement. Assessment. Okay. Um, and, and I think uh, that was the consensus at the last meeting was that uh, we did not want to dilute the power exactly. that, uh, that existed already, that um, at, least, at least that's how I feel, that uh, I do not want to dilute the power uh, of that provision of uh, enabling people to serve on certain committees yeah. when they have relatives working for the city. Correct. Uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Reyna, yes, sir. Oh, he's agreeing with me. Mm -hmm. okay. we, we begin that discussion. Uh, I, do, I do think, I, I want to make this point, and I know that this is perhaps somewhat abstract, an abstract concept, but uh, the trust and confidence of the people and their government is better served. When we don't have the old, you know, uh, argument of, you know, was Yasi Noa even a Watanasi, you know, there's, they're blood, they have blood ties, you know? Some parientes, you know, they, 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 they're relatives. And, and, and so we need to, to guard against any, uh, you know, uh, stain Right. You know, on, on on any governmental body, however appointed, you know whatever functions they may have, I to agree. to to not be seen as basically, you know, make being at the beck and call of people you know, on that commission, uh, because of their blood ties or parentesco. So I think that's really important uh, to keep it you know, uh, as free as possible from any taint of, of nepotism. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, I you? agree uh, wholeheartedly. Did you hear me? Should not be a hint of, uh, of well, nepotism I, or the questionable ties. So is this an item that, that we're going to vote on to, to get it's on the, to, yeah, to it's move beyond? The, um, well, uh, I, I'm under <coughs> the same impression. I thought we had voted to not weaken anything, but 
it's back on the agenda. So I, I, I mean, my personal would be to leave everything as it is in order not to weaken any, any of these, you know, committees by allowing ex ties of blood relatives or whatever on certain committees only and not on others. So I would, I would like to see it stay the same way by keeping it strong. So. Because it's an action item, uh, Mr. Chair, I think we need to go ahead and, and make it formal. Okay, so is anybody um, I move, willing to make I a motion? I move that, we, uh, that, that those provisions of nepotism remain the same. Thank you. I uh, second. So second. In, in yes, essence, if I, if I may push it. Yes, sir. You're saying that the, the rule or the, the, the way that it's written right now is the proper way. You know, we don't want to in any way alter it. That is what we're saying, yes, because there was a request from the council for us to reconsider, but we feel that it should be left. So we can, yes. In, 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 this, in, in your opinion, you're saying if we were to consider anything, it would be to make it less effective. Yes. Right. So, so leave it at the same way. Yes. <coughs> you could just very briefly go back and understand the, the roots, the root of that, of that proposal. It came, first of all, from management, right? Came from, not from us, it came from management. Yeah, came Think from. of him a citizen, a, a, well, a citizen who yeah. isn't, you know, uh, uh, with, with the city of Loretta. Okay? okay, so we do have a, a, a motion and a second. All in favor of leaving it the way it is? Aye. Say aye, please. Aye. 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 Motion passes. You Thank you. Uh, let's see, where are we now? Uh, before we go any further, uh, in, the, in the minutes of the last uh, meeting, uh, Mr. Uh, Efrain Sanchez had requested uh, a resume of the actions that this commission has taken on the uh, on what we have uh, taken action, is that report ready for us? That is yes. It is. We received that. I received <coughs> that email today. Yeah, in the email. The email. The PDF. Oh, in the email. you don't have a print. Uh, I, I think you guys. I think the the. Uh, I think I think they were they were supplied in the agenda. Good. I do. I do remember seeing an email, but I. I don't know if you have it here. I don't see it. All right. Our apologies. It must not have been in, been printed. Sorry. We have it. We have it available. We we can yeah. send it to everyone and, again. And we did get it on the email, but yeah. uh, I guess maybe we were expecting to see a copy of it here. Yeah. So, it, it was our intention to bring it today. I mean, unless it just got lost. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? On because that? Okay. because uh, okay. some of the uh, proposals that were brought to us today, we have already taken action on them. Correct. And so, um, in order not to duplicate uh, mm -hmm. what we have already done to eliminate those. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay. Anything else on that? Okay. Uh, the next item, letter B. Proposed amendment to section 6.04, which is the budget. So um, what does the uh, commission want to do in, re in relation to that? Let's uh, could you refresh? Uh, okay, what happened last time is that uh, I had put an item to amend the uh, section of the charter requiring an ordinance to include uh, to include an ordinance for discretionary funds. As we started to discuss that, uh, there was a sense from the commission that maybe we should amend the charter itself directly in the budget area of the charter by stating a, uh, an amount that we would like to be adhered to. So I withdrew my motion of the ordinance, but in retrospect, I should have probably let it and we could have both. So it's withdrawn. Correct. We, don't have, we don't have a motion. We don't have that right now. So the motion, I mean, the item today is uh, budget itself, 6.04, and whether or not we want to stipulate an amount for the discretionary funds that have to be <coughs> adhered to by the council, being that if it were to be in the charter, they would have to, to follow. So. Mr. Chair, I may, I think yeah, back ahead. then, I, I thank you for refreshing uh, me on this issue. Uh, the uh, concern, I have two concerns, okay? Uh, certainly the amount is of concern, right? The amount of the uh, discretionary fund that is allotted to each, each uh, official, official, but certainly on the governing body. 
but I'm more concerned with the criteria that, that they have to follow in the spending. You know, expenditures are more important. How, what you spend it on is more important to me than having it to spend. Okay. Uh, having, you know, uh, and I've also made the point that, you know, it cannot be peanuts. If it's going to be peanuts, you know, and peanuts is a relative thing, right? I mean, it could be, you know, and we, somebody said 50,000. Well, 50,000 is peanuts, right? Okay. This day and age, but inflation, all that, the dollar is not what it used to be, right? Or, or at least it has the value it used to have, the, the buying power. So 50,000 really is nothing, you know? And so I'm all for exploring, you know, the, you know, a, a, an amount that is, that is significant enough, substantial enough that it's going to make an impact right. uh, on projects that that official can undertake in his or her uh, district, right? Mm -hmm. Or in the city of his mayor. Uh, but I am concerned that they don't spend it foolishly or, you know, on stupid things, mm -hmm. on things that really are just basically self-serving, that they actually serve the needs of the people. And, 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 and that has to be, there has to be some criteria, objective criteria, that, that they have to follow, guidelines, you know, uh, rules that they have to follow before they can actually expend it. It can't be, pues gasta lo que te la gana, you know? Yeah, a stature or something. Frivolous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir, so, uh, thank you, Mr. So I just want to make sure we, sure. That, you know, unless we're ready to do that, I mean, I, I I can't, I'm not ready yeah. to vote on anything because right. I don't see something concrete. Anybody else have something to add to that, Mr. Castillo or Rodriguez or Ms. Sainz? Uh, um, at the last uh, meeting, uh, uh, I said that I personally um, would prefer a limit of 50000 which is what San Antonio has, <coughs> a city much larger than, than our city with a budget so much larger than our budget and, and yet the council members over there have, have 50,000. Why we have half a million here, it's one of those things that it's hard to explain. Uh, if, if we are going to allow the council members uh, to continue to have uh, this power, I would, I would set a, a limit of no more than 50,000. As to how they spend it, uh, anything can be justified if, if no so I mean well almost everything can be justified <laughs> uh, so it's pretty much open-ended uh, they can say I'm doing this for whatever reason for the benefit of my constituents so this way it's it's 50,000 it's it's you're giving them something to uh, to get to spend it but uh, but uh, to play with, okay, to play with. Uh, I'd rather not uh, have any any right. any yeah. any funds at all. If if because if you have something that really needs to be done in your district, uh, why not bring it. it to the whole council and, exactly. and fight for it, or go to the city manager and say, look, my district needs this, and so if you can justify that to the whole council or the or the city manager, um, that's the best way to do it yeah. instead of just spending it out of your half a million discretionary funds. I, I, I understand that. I hear that. Go ahead, Mr. Okay. My, my point is that you need the votes on the council to allocate resources for your district. Yes. And when budgets are made, you know, the working class poor from South Laredo take a hit. Okay? And so it's, you know, unless you have the votes, I mean, we're, you know, I don't know where the last terse came down to South Laredo, but I mean, certainly I know it went north the last time I heard. Uh, and I think the killings were behind that one. So, I mean, I'm concerned that we have a problem, you know, in the decision making, the power in the governing body mm -hmm. to allocate resources where they're needed by doing the budget process. <coughs> like, that's the problem, you know? And so the, I can understand the need to allocate, like to tie down, so, you know, put out, earmark so much money for each district so that projects that are needed in that district can be undertaken without having to have the majority of the council approve it, you know, or through the budget process, which is what is really goes on in this in this in this game of budgeting. And and so I have no problem with discretionary funds. I have no problem 
because of that, uh, with even a margin, I, I do have a problem with half a million dollars. I have a problem with that. But I don't, you know, I, I don't think 50 is enough, but I do have a problem in not having, you know, criteria, strict criteria on how they can use those funds, allocate those funds. You know, I, I'm not for the spend it on whatever you want, you know, because we can always justify it as serving your, your I mean, I can already see it, you know, some big bash out there to serve the needs of, of their community uh, in which only, you know, people with ties show up. I mean, I'm not, you know, I cannot support something like that. You know, I, I, you know, any, like, we can justify it you know, any way, justify it any way you want. It can't be a free for all. Well, that's how it is right now. It's open-ended. Well, we, that's it's what I'm open saying. Ended. I'm it's, opposed uh, to it. Yes. Uh, and half a million dollars is not really going to take care of a major project in your district. Uh, so half a million dollars is, is the term you used to play with. Uh, I'd rather that they not play with half a million dollars each not, uh, I, per I year. Didn't, I did not uh, say that I agree with half a million dollars. Mm -hmm. There are significant projects that you can carry out with 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 25,000. I mean, you could put up a whole building with, you know, 50,000, 100,000. Come on, you know, it's, it's you know, that's reality, you know, and, and so uh, that's my point, you know. Those are my two points, and I'll stand by them to the very bitter end. All right, thank you. Ms. Saint, any word on that? Any additional? Well, I was, uh, you know, remember they shared with us all their, yes. of where the money was allotted. Uh, it just seems to me that, that they're just, the councilmen just have too much free reign in what they're going to spend it on and, uh, and, you know, we're always complaining, oh, they spent it on this or they spent mm -hmm. it needlessly on that. There has to be some control beforehand to make Strictly. sure that it doesn't, ever, doesn't ever happen again. Get to again. that point, yeah. Can I add, add something to that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, uh, let me ask legal. Under the uh, new law that passed, uh, citizens can chime in on anything before we vote as a public meeting. Is that apply here? Because we haven't voted, and if somebody has something to say, I believe we can let them say, right? Because that law that passed where any citizen can speak on any agenda item. I think, what, I think once discussion has been concluded between y'all, you can, you can open the floor for uh, citizens to speak. I'm sorry? Once you've finished discussing, oh, okay. you can open the floor for Okay, right citizens. before we take the vote then, in other words. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Uh, well, is there any more discussion? I, I would like to say a couple of things. Uh, one of the reasons that I think this is important is because in the first place, there's nothing in writing to govern the discretionary funds. There is no ordinance, there's no charter provision, and I don't think that, that we should have had it in the first place. Uh, San Antonio has an ordinance, so anytime they want to amend that amount, at least they can go to the process of saying, we will amend the amount by amending the ordinance. We don't have anything like that. So that, to me, is the most basic thing that's, that's wrong. Now, it just so happens that they allocate them out of, the, out of bond money, and bond money has a restriction of saying it has to be brick and mortar. But that only is because it happens to be coming out of bond money. So if they take it from the bridge revenue, for example, then there's no restrictions. So I think the whole, the whole layout is bad. So that is my opinion. Uh, yes, um, any more discussion? We can write yeah, Mr. Okay, Mr. Castillo and then Mr. The, Castillo. I, I, I agree with Mr. Reina, the, 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 and, and also I see your point. There has to be some kind of control mechanism yes, to designate what items, what uh, uh, expenditures can be, uh, can be gotten from, that, from those funds. And that thing that that's what you're saying that's missing. Yes, sir. Guidelines and controls to to tell the the councilman what or councilwoman what what it they can and cannot spend it on. Mm -hmm. Now the number, whether it's fifty or half a million, which is currently half a million, I do have a, a concern about that, okay. the amount, and I concur with Mr. Rodriguez. The amount should be looked at, whether it's if it's, as Mr. Rina says, you can't buy anything, it's peanuts. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. 50,000 is 50,000 regardless. Correct. But can, can it be more? Yes, it can be 100, mm -hmm. but it must be controlled. It must be controlled. That's my point. Okay. It, it's got to be a, what you can spend it on and what you cannot. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Castle, were you, were you going to say something? Well, 
You have to agree. Wancho Caso, for the record. Uh, oh. We have to agree that he can do this. <clears throat> oh, well, actually, by law, he is he's allowed to. Uh, by law, really? Is that what the legal says? I mean, I don't have any problem with him speaking. I thought we would have. To. Okay, plus, I'm not What's the regular chairman, but a motion to uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Casa, please approach and speak your piece. Go ahead, Mr. Casa. Yeah, uh, what, they, what they do with the discretionary funding is they borrow the money, they issue right. COs. Every year they borrow $4 million. I, I, I have the records there, you know, yes. for the budget. They borrow the $4 million every year. Last month, December 23rd, there was a front page article that Councilman Alga wanted to issue general obligation bonds for infrastructure, you know, paving streets all over again. Why don't they put their discretionary funding up to a bond vote mm -hmm. for the people? Why do they have half a million that they can spend literally any way they want? And then when you start putting criteria, you're just going to make it more difficult, more complex. You need to have simplicity and centralization. Once you do that, they're going to have loopholes. It's going to be very difficult for accountability. You should just take it away. When I was there, we got more done than this council did. We got that bridge done when I was there. And it went, and the other projects like the, the fire, uh, the, the police station and all the rec centers and the library, that all got done because you, the people, voted for a bond issue. Right. We got more things done, you know, than what they're doing now. And that money's getting wasted every year, four million. They should come together as a council and agree. And I don't believe that one council member is going to get with another group and say, well, you're not going to get any in your district. That's not true. And if you want to stop the TERS, which I agree with you, Mr. Reyna, I think those TERS are wrong, especially when you're giving it to wealthy, wealthy families. How do you stop that? Give the 65 year olds 100% exemption, you won't have the money. You will not have the money to give the TERS. That TERS will not make it out of there. And the county wants to do the TERS, you're an attorney, you know it's illegal. There's already been four AG opinions that they can't participate. So I don't know how the county is going to participate in some of these terms, but take the money away from them and it all comes to a halt. Um, uh, Mr. Castro, I have a question for you. Uh, it, the uh, bond money, right? Mm -hmm. There's general obligation bonds and certificates of obligation. Can you tell us the difference between the two? Yeah, GOs, you got to go before the voters. Okay. The COs, you don't. And the council uses the COs? Yes, they oh. issue COs to do, that's what everybody does. So they, they don't have to go to the they vote. They don't have to go to the vote. But yet, they want to do a bond issue. It came out, a massive bond issue. Yes, I remember that. Well, why don't you put, you know, why don't you put your four million every year in there? Part of the jail. I mean, come on. In four years that you're there, I mean, it's like 20 million every time that they're, you know, they're just, and it's all cookie cutter policy. And it never gets done. It never gets completed. They want to put a bronze over there on the bridge. I live downtown. It's, you know, there's a lot of other needs. They should be working on a lot of other stuff. Not So, I mean, I think you should just take it away from, well, it's not going to be up to you. It's going to be up to the council. But exactly. at the end of the day, it's going to be up to the people. I mean, because the council's not going to, they're not going to vote to police no. themselves. They've not, they, they haven't demonstrated they can do that, and they're not going to do it. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. OK, so we have item B. Proposed amendment to section 6.04 budget. Uh, the idea being that whether we want to put something in the charter that limits the amount of discretionary funds. Now, please also consider that the judge was also, that was one of his main uh, items. So, do we vote on it? Do we table it for so he can be here? I motion to table this item because whether the judge is here or not. Sorry. I think we don't have enough information right now to make an informed judgment decision here today. I think we're, we're still asking a lot of questions that we don't have answers to. And besides, we don't know what, if we <coughs> are then agree to con how to control this, we're going to go ahead and let it stand. We have some mm -hmm. discretionary funds available. Uh, we can decide how much, but we, I think we all probably are going to agree that we need to have some controls over this if there are going to be discretionary funds. And we don't have the language in terms of how to get this thing controlled. I mean, you know, how to go about it. So I would, I would prefer to have as many of the other commission members present so we can have a full. Okay, full Mr. Rodriguez. I agree to postpone it um, um, at least until the. If this was one of uh, the judges, uh, I believe so. uh, uh, items that he was really uh, 
after mm -hmm. that we should wait for him to, to get back here. But uh, to your point as to we don't have enough information, when will we have enough information? Because if we don't, if we don't ask for that information or we don't ask witnesses to come forward and give us that information that we need, uh, we just want to be postponing the it. The only reason I said that uh, is because we're still asking questions. You know, we've asked Mr. Caso to step forward and kind of educate us, you know, how this thing plays out. I mean, that's, that's really not the position we want to be in on this day when we're going to be voting on in such an important matter. <coughs> you know, we need to do our homework. That's what it comes boils down to. You know, we need to do our homework and not have to have somebody else come tell us, you know, how it works. And, and it, you know, so we have to, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't think we should vote on something just because we already heard it two or three times. You know, I think we should vote on it when we're informed enough to make, you know, a, you know, a, a wise judgment, wise decision. I agree. I agree. But that, that, that information, are we going to ask staff to prepare for we, us? I would say we ask staff, we ask, we heard from Mr. Casa today who, you know, uh, who's the, what you, you know, and, and so I, 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 I will do what I can to do my homework on this because I want to make an informed, a wise decision. But uh, again, you know, other other cities, as we know, have <coughs> do it this and that way, and, and I don't know that we have their roadmap to how to get it done uh, wisely, right? How they do it, uh, as we did with the other issue that's coming up, right? Uh, you got information from other other cities, but we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to copycat something that works, right? That fits our needs. Right. Okay. So down uh, the road, then it, it would be a matter of asking staff to to seek out those uh, those cities that have that have dealt with this problem before and how they uh, have <coughs> uh, restrained the council from from X number of dollars and then how to spend it. Yes, I would say so, yes, and I think that that we have a, an important resource here that should be available to us, uh, uh, you know, by, for the asking, and that we should do it. Like, we should do it right now, today. Ask the, the you know, city secretary's office uh, to, uh, to the attorney's office to assist us getting, collecting information that's relevant to this issue, this matter. Uh, how do other cities do it? You know, someone mentions that Antonio has only 50, and, you know, and the question then becomes, you know, if we put it, if we put a, an amount in the city charter, we're going to have to amend the city charter to be able to raise that amount or to lower that amount or to remove that amount. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Okay. So, so before we vote, uh, I believe Ms. Herford wants to, to say a few words. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Herford. Thank you. The reason we're having this discussion on the discretionary spending is because of the abuse that we have seen. In my district, District 4, it's blighted. $700,000 uh, that pertain to my district just went out to other districts, okay? 250,000 for the statue that, what, the birds are gonna poop on? 250,000 for the Viva, no, the Americas Boulevard, which now you all want to, well, the council wants to build a shopping center, and 200,000 that went from my district to the Lazy River. And I don't have a problem with, you know, having the children have fun in the Lazy River. It's just that if it's designated for my district, there's a lot of poor people in my district, and my district looks like a third world country in some areas. What district you're from? Four. And that's all I wanted to share with you so that you know where the money goes. It's the abuse and the wasteful spending. I think it, it was mostly wasteful spending and abuse. Thank you for giving me the extra Thank you, time. Thank you, Mr. Sure. So, well, I, I, I agree that the problem, the problem is due to the fact that it's open-ended. It, it, it goes back uh, to controls. Yes, there's no control. It's, uh, they can spend whatever amount they, they this, this so, dictate, so, and then they can get to spend it on whatever they want to. So, yes. The, the amount has to be uh, looked, at. Uh, looked at, and and how they spend it also has to have some rules behind. It. Okay, so we have a motion to the table. table and a second. So uh, uh, may I just one? Yes, go ahead. I'm quick, sorry, Mr. Castillo. Quick, quick, a quick observation. Go ahead. Yeah, and I, I, everybody here is talking, and we're also um, giving our course our, our opinion. I, I concur with Mr. 
Reina, and I see the point with Mr. Rodriguez as well. The, the fact that we're going to just uh, follow somebody's example because we're going to look around cities and see what they do. I've never been of the opinion that I just go and copy somebody for the heck of, for the sake of copying. We want a, something that fits Laredo, and it, right. it doesn't, if we're going to get somebody's ideas that it's already a, an invented wheel, I want that wheel to work for Laredo, not let's stick it in here and you know, run it the way it, oh, that's it a good is. Point. That's we want to make sure that it works for us. Um, and that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. So um, before we take a vote, let me ask the legal. So if, as Mr. Rina said, and Mr. Rodriguez also said, we want more information in order to, to be able to eventually make a good decision. What is the process? Uh, the chairman is not here, so what is our capacity to reach out to you and say we want this for the next meeting? You can ask me directly right now. Okay, but let's say we don't we don't know yet what. You can, can you can email me and I can prepare a document to the original all of you. Okay. Director. Okay. Thank you. Money. Mr. Budget director or somebody to come. Yep. We need to. Well, we can let him know, and then. So the motion is to table and a second. Uh -huh. All in favor of, of uh, that motion, say aye. 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 Motion is tabled, and we come to uh, letter C now, which is a proposed an amendment to section 10.06, which is council districts adjustment of districts. Okay, so I'm not that familiar with this particular one. Uh, who on the commission wants to start? Mr. Reina, go ahead, sir. Uh, <coughs> Chair and commissioners, as you all, uh, let me refresh your memories. Uh, Mr. Chairman Flores came, uh, uh, came to us uh, raising the flag, the red flag, that there were one or two districts, single member districts, or uh, way or you know way beyond the you know the, the, the margin of, so they, would, they wouldn't have no more the, you know, the one person one vote doctrine or principle was was no more uh, applicable there because they had more population way more population than some of the other districts right. uh, but because our city charter uh, says that we will the, the redistricting commission uh, will be re, uh, looking at adjusting districts after the census comes in, uh, that that would be every 10 years. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, when we have districts growing in population, and yet, uh, you know, they, they only have one, one representative, right? This is what we're talking about. And so there is a rule that, you know, you know the rule of one person, one, one vote, you know, that you know, well, we won't go into all the jurisprudence on this, you know, the people mumbo jumbo on this. Would you say that they should at least be approximate in size to be able to be more or less aligned with the one person, one vote principle, right? And so the, the, the question came up, can we do it without actually uh, waiting till the census Correct. comes out, right? Can we do it in between? Can we do it in between? Be you know, uh, how many years in between should we be doing this and what data uh, are we going to be relying on to be able to to determine, to redistrict, basically, uh, uh, because of the, now the uh, disproportionate uh, size of certain districts, you know, that would basically be violated with the one person, one vote principle. So we asked and uh, staff from the city to city secretary staff to to uh, collect as many uh, uh, um, provisions and city charters throughout the city cities in Texas where that actually did adjust their districts be in between the census taken at the census or the reporting of the census and we have now uh, before us I think uh, been handed and this is uh, not today, but sometime back, handed mm -hmm. uh, copies of, of those of cities with those provisions, those Correct. provisions. Yes, and so there, there. In other words, you know, and getting back to this, and I, 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 I totally get it. You know why? You know, we just don't want to copycat to avoid doing our homework and doing the, the hard work. But uh, that fits. And it's a fit, right? So we look at those to see how they're doing it. You know, just to get a reference for that. 
and we know that San Antonio does it, and that uh, and there's language in there. It says how they are able to, how they what what language or how what track they follow in terms of of adjusting their districts in between the census. Uh, so the question then is for us is uh, first do we want to do that? Do we want to adjust districts in between the census? Uh, uh, you know, and not following every, you know, like not after every ten years, uh, and and then how many years in between we're gonna, you know, is it gonna be automatic? Is it like set, or is it based on a for ongoing process of having the redistricting committee commission be looking, you know, ba on a periodic basis on whether or not we have, ex you know, an expansive, really expansive uh, population growth in a district such that it violates a one person, one, one vote principle. And so that an adjustment might be proposed at that point. You know, it's like, if I see it, that it's all going too much, you know, the commission then may, is that what we want them to come to us, to, to whoever, everybody and say, we need to, or, or propose to them and or say, we need to adjust these districts. Uh, or it could be every four years or every, you know, that's the interval for doing this could be set, you know, by, this would be in the city charter because that's part of the, the city charter uh, created the, the redistricting commission and provided its powers and its responsibilities and duties. So, so that's where we were at, I think, discussing that. And, and we now have that, that information from the other cities, how they do it. Um, and so now it's in our hands. Do you know that? Anybody else have uh, what? What I noticed is the the one that the example from Houston City Charter that they gave us. To me, I, I like that because it says in each year during which a city general election is to be held, then an investigation will be held to determine uh, the population of the city and the population of these of the districts. So that seems like the right time to do it. In an election year, you, you know, there, let's say we have the November elections, but I just don't know what instrument would be available to carry out that that process in a timely fashion. But I, I like the way that that it's written in the Houston uh, Charter. So, so just to interject, just for clarification, yes, sir. The uh, cities that were provided, um, it's only San Antonio and El Paso that provide for both. Um, the 10 year census mm -hmm. um, redistricting and the use of uh, redistricting at any other time when the districts are disproportionate. The rest of them follow the 10 year uh, census. Okay, because uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. under the Houston City Charter, it mm -hmm. says uh, in paragraph number three, in each year during which a city general election is to be held, mm -hmm. city council shall conduct an investigation and determine the population of the city and the population of each district. Mm -hmm. Each such determination shall be based upon the best available data. Okay, so there's no action, just an investigation? I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit confused, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, it leaves it like dangling. So, I mean, when I read it, I thought that that was the purpose of holding. Like, and? So, so then it would be every, yeah, so. Uh, the last paragraph, it goes into <coughs> that. After yes. any That's such recent. determination, yes. if the distribution among the various districts is determined to be, I would say, excessive, mm -hmm. then, then they can take action. So that's, that's why. I, yes, yes. My apologies, I have my notes. Okay. All right. Well, if I may, uh, yes, Mr. Sir, Chair, sir. Uh, just bear with me. I'm reading from the city uh, uh, of San Antonio City Charter, uh, which I think we have it. Correct. Uh, the boundaries of the districts or wards shall, can you all hear me? Yep. The boundaries of the districts or wards shall be re-examined and redetermined by ordinance or appropriate following in each succeeding federal decennial census or at other times exactly. where substantial variances in the number and makeup of the population of districts or wards have occurred, taken into consideration, annexations, disannexation, et cetera, right? Uh, so that's how they, uh, that's what they do, right? right. Uh, I don't know how it works. You yeah. know, I, 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 my, my, my concern with all these, you know, redistricting, you know, and 
Oh, never mind the other issues that I have with making sure the poor aren't left out of it or the people of color, right? Which is primary a prior concern of mine. Uh, is that, you know, people start running for office the day after the last election. Mm -hmm. You know, and they start looking at, you know, their, a district or the city, whatever it is. But it, it, here we're talking about districts. Uh, and so, I mean, it's, it's, it's really not to, to, a, to, to advantage anybody, you know, mm -hmm. who's doing that or that, but, uh, you know, th there is an impact that will be, it might be adverse to people that, what is too short to an election, right? You know, so that, so that there should be enough time uh, before the filing date, filing deadline for office that people know what district they're going to be uh, eligible to run it. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I understand. Yes, sir. So th that's one of the things that, I, that I'm concerned yeah. about, making sure that we have that. <clears throat> so, Rodriguez, so, well, it seems to me that this is something that we need to have in this town. It, it may not be a necessity in towns that, that have a stable population, mm -hmm. but in this town, it, it, it's growing by leaps and bounds. And so we can't wait 10 years because by waiting 10 years, then we have those differences as has been shown to us in that chart where one district has thousands more people than another. So you know, I, for one, would not want to keep it the way it is. It's too long, 10 years. Um, so as to how many times or when to change it as needed, or maybe every, since elections are every four years, mm -hmm or every two years for the council. So, there. so every, maybe every four years, look at it, and if it's necessary to do it, to, to readjust the, uh, the boundaries. Uh, but to give it the way it is, it, yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's too much of an imbalance to wait 10 years. And just to uh, point that out, Mr. Castillo, you have a, can you, can you please read the district with the least number of, uh, or, or I can have, thank you. According to this, uh, this was uh, as of 2016. It says uh, population of District 2, 27,822. And then we have District 6, 35,908. So that's a difference of about eight, almost <coughs> 7,500 people. And I think the charter allows for a 10% variation. So, I mean, that's that exceeds uh, that, you know. Quite a bit. So, I hope that what I said didn't smack of my wanting to maintain the present system. No, no, I no. You just uh, kind of like, uh, what? How do we go about I, doing it? I am, I am more as concerned as anybody on this commission about ensuring that we are, uh, you know, um, complying one man, with one the vote. one person, one vote rule. You know, and you know that that to me is something that's that's actually you know that's sacred. Uh, to say, you know, a cornerstone of our democracy is to ensure that, you know, we do have one person, one vote. And it's approximate because the Supreme Court has ruled that it has to be approximate. It can't be exactly, you know, equal, okay? So we can allow for that, but, but certainly that can't be, you know, when you, you get to 7,000 or 10,000 or whatever, any, even 5,000, it's too much. It's already too much. Uh, you know, and, and, but there is a 10% uh, variance, so, you know, I think we have a, a, a that exceeds a 10% <coughs> mm -hmm. variance Correct. for that, for that, for yes, that district, right? Uh, so, you know, uh, now I want to serve in the redistricting commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I believe there's, uh, what I'm hearing is a consensus, more or less a consensus that a change is needed. <coughs> We might not be there yet as to exactly the details of that change. So I would say, I mean, I don't know, do we, we bring it back? Do we just keep bringing it back until we finalize it? Or how is the best way to go about this, uh, keeping well, this item up there in the forefront? I don't want to sound like a table, you know, here, you know, it's there. No quiero correr la mesa, you know. But, but I mean, you know, I, I would prefer that we have as many commissioner members here as right. possible because this yes. is an important discussion. Okay. But it still uh, served that we just at least you know, oh, started. I, I, I always enjoy yeah. discussing yeah. that with everybody, you know, with you and anybody else. But the clock here, you know. Mr. Clark. Know. He knows we'll see each other in the streets again. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I do think we should table it uh, in, in all fairness to those that are right. here today. Uh, okay. 
Because so I moved the table. I'm in second. Is there a second, Mr. Second. Rodriguez? Again? Okay, so there is a, a, as it was with item B, item C, we have a motion by Mr. Reina, Commissioner Reina to table for the second by Commissioner Rodriguez. All in favor say aye. 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 And uh, the next item, item number five, future agenda items. So at this point is where any of the commissioners can recommend or bring up something that they would like to take up at the next meeting. I, uh, I would want to see all the uh, proposals that were brought forward tonight uh, to be put on, on future agendas for us to consider, minus those that have already been uh, taken action on. <coughs> so this is where your resume of what the actions that we have already taken uh, on those items, if those, if those can be uh, eliminated, but those that we have not taken action on, um, either because we have postponed or because they, they may be entirely new, I would want to see every last one of those issues that were brought to us tonight to be considered uh, in an appropriate fashion. We could not possibly handle all of them at the next meeting, but whatever the, uh, the uh, number, uh, proper number would be for us to adequately debate them. Uh, on future meetings. I, yeah, I, I, I see no problem in, in receiving uh, proposals from the citizens mm -hmm. that were not members of the commission. I do think, though, that, that as with all other things, they should have sponsorship. Each item should have sponsorship by one of the commissioners. It, it, it just can't come from the public wholesale, and we have to put them on the agenda because they submitted it to us. We have to be one of us, or two of us, or three, or all of us should sponsor each of those items that we think should go. You know, it, should, it cannot come just from, this, from, the, from the people straight to an agenda for this commission. That's my position. Okay, so is there any, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Rian, I'm not that familiar with, with the process, so I don't know if legal has any it, information it, it, pertaining to that? It's the board's decision whether or not to okay. take up an, an item the next, uh, I don't think anyone needs to pledge to the item. Oh. For example, these it two. It is not necessary to for each of us to pledge for each of those items. But okay. if one of you wants to discuss it in the next meeting, and, and we all agree to discuss it, then we can put on the next agenda. So, for example, right now, in order to proceed with getting us a copy, we would have to vote right now whether we want those those uh, <coughs> all su suggestions included in our next uh, agenda documents, right? I mean, we can decide what's going to be on the next agenda. I mean, in between this. The conclusion of this of this meeting of the next. Okay. I mean, we, we just need to get together and determine which ones we want to put on the agenda for the next time. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, I just you know, again, I want to give you know full hearing, citizens to the citizens, uh, anything they have. Okay, I, I have no problem with that. Uh, I think that to take them wholesale is going to be problematic, and I think you you pointed that out as well. I think we need to to. To next meeting, review those agenda items and decide and kind of schedule them for future meetings rather than to say, well, we're going to go ahead and take them up all at once at no, the next no, meeting, that, right? So I that's say, not what I said. I said to take them in an orderly fashion because it would be impossible to to debate 27 or something. Okay. I, I stand corrected that you said it, you did say that. Yeah. What, I'm, what I'm saying yes. is that how we go about receiving them and then determining <clears throat> The orderly fashion in which we're going to take them would be done by, you know, as an agenda item in the next meeting that we decide then there and not necessarily take up any agenda items or any of those items for action at that meeting. Okay. So if the agenda item would be the consideration to, of, to of, schedule of, those to decide amongst ourselves. Okay. The the fashion and the, the orderly fashion, and we're going to take those at future meetings. Not at that meeting, at future meetings. Mr. Rodriguez, are you on the same page there? Well, let me, let me see if I understand correctly. Okay. How many items were proposed tonight? I proposed seven. Seven, seven. 26. 26 and seven? 33. 33. And some of them we have already you taken care of. Items. Where are you getting your ideas from? From the charter. Well, we, uh, from, from bas head? Bas basically, we have been handling, debating, the items that were proposed to us by the city council way back then. 
And it was. The people. What about the people? I know, I know. I, that's why I'm, I, I want to. <coughs> so, Some of us are also people. <laughs> so, um, to, to uh, for, for my, my, my clear understanding, the 33 items that were proposed tonight by citizens, um, some of those we have already dealt with. Let's say 10, uh, but that would be something that since we don't have the resume, uh, then could you review them so that between now and the next meeting, so that those that we have not dealt with, that those being uh, on the agenda for next meeting, but not to necessarily uh, take action on them, but maybe schedule three or four per meeting or five or so down the road. Yes. The meeting. next meeting, we will be looking at the proposed agenda items, those proposed uh, city charter amendments, that's what yes. they are. Yes. Uh, and, and, and deciding then how to schedule, yes. the scheduling yes. those items for yes. future agendas. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so we have a for, for the uh, in order not to duplicate them, then uh, you, you uh, yeah, uh, staff and and the uh, and the citizens that brought them forth for you to get together and 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 say uh, this one has already been dealt with, so we eliminate it from the uh, from the thirty three that will be on on the uh, on the uh, on our agenda for next meeting. Let's say fifteen. Let's say twenty five or less. But the thing is that uh, I would want for the citizens uh, to get together with you and so that you together, the citizens and staff, can eliminate the ones that we have already taken action well, on. I'm sorry, but I don't think that's, that's right. I think they look at them and they, they eliminate them based on what they understand we voted on. I don't think they have a role in that. Well, some of them, some, some of the items, let's clarify. Some of the items have been dealt with and have been have been discussed, but there hasn't been a decision made. Also, we don't want to just wipe them off. Because right. yes. We've already talked about it. We we certainly want to hear the the public's input. On yes. This. Yes. What I meant was those that we have already voted on mm -hmm. or against. Mm -hmm. Those that we have keep postponing. Those we we keep. Yeah, getting. But they they should know that. They know. Yeah. That. They know. Right. Right. We have a list of it. You cor um, you they corp them out. They don't corp them out. Send them to us. Okay, so we have a, a you're on the same page to uh, bring it, put it on the agenda, those 33 uh, suggested by the citizens directly, and you're going to cross-reference them with the ones that we have already discussed yeah. and eliminate those and then uh, put them on the document for the next, a uh, packet for the next meeting? Right. Okay, so before we vote on this item, Ms. Sainz, did you have anything else to say? No, uh, what I would appreciate is that if you would forward all of that information with enough lead time mm -hmm. so that we can read it and okay. study it and, you know, research okay. so that we can come more prepared. Okay. okay. So before we vote, and, uh, and, I'm sorry, and Mr. Rodriguez, uh, go ahead. And this, is, this is not the first time that we haven't gotten something that has been requested mm -hmm. by the commission. Uh, so that somebody needs to double check the materials that are presented to us that, that if it was requested at the previous meeting to make absolutely sure that that they are presented at mm -hmm. the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. okay. To eliminate what, to avoid the problems like the, the issue that we had uh, today with the resume or those items that we had taken action. Right, right. So, so just for clarification, um, this is going to be put on the next agenda these items, you guys are going to be considering in what order you want to address them in, for, in, in future. In the future, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, going forward from that point. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So none of them are going else? to be action items, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Rodriguez, go ahead. So, in, but we're letting staff the, the dictate uh, decide the. Uh, at what schedule we're no, going no, to no. take They're going to put them no, 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 for no, no, us no, to no, decide. No, All of them will be presented to yes. us, and then okay. we decide how many yes. 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 per meeting in, in yes. the future. Okay. We will decide. Okay, no, that's fine. Yes. So before we vote on... Uh, on uh, There's a question. Yes, right. item five. Before we vote, uh, Mr. Cardwell is raising his hand, indicating he wants to address us. So under the new law, uh, yes, that, law, that right is granted. Go ahead, Mr. Cardwell. State your name again. For please. the record, my name is David Cardwell. 
and thank you. I agree with you that they do need to be compared because there's duplications I'm hearing now within our list. So there's probably several duplications. But with that, since I also heard that we will probably not be able to speak with the city attorney because I think that was maybe agreed here, then since it's public record, I am officially requesting public, public information, transparency, a copy of that summary that y'all are going to be using that you have prepared at the request of the commission. Don't y'all have a summary or it's going to be sent to you? We have can we get a copy of that so we can do our also cross reference provide them a copy yes yes, yes. please have thank a copy you because when you come here you'll say whether or not you yeah. agree with us right yes okay okay so what would be the actual process by which they would be getting a copy can it be attached to the agenda no no but the, the, they are talking copy. about getting it tomorrow or yes. the day after yeah, so that. we can it's start working ready. on it it, oh. it it was attached to the agenda oh. online it was sent through email um, that's how they received it, but they don't know it was it supposed is. to be attached to the agenda. If you can go look at the agenda online, it should be attached because it, it, it was to be, it was to be considered for the board. But you, you're talking about the one that they're creating, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yes, right. that's going to be created. We, we created. It for no, no, it's the one they've already the created. One's coming up. The one you already prepared yes, for, yes. but you forgot to bring the yes. paper copy. Yes. Oh, yes. But it's already it's, in the uh, <coughs> online. It should be online. But you want the paper copy? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, tomorrow? I can, can you if pick it's it online, I'll download it and print it. So and if not, in case I have a, a concern with that, can I call? Who can I call tomorrow in case I have a concern or can't find it on my computer? Uh, if I can get a name after the meeting and a phone number, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Any other comments uh, from the citizens? And, no? All right, thank you. Uh, so the motion uh, and the second to uh, provide the list to us of the 33 uh, suggestions from the citizens directly. So all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. And uh, finally, we come to the adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? I move to adjourn. Mr. Castillo, a second? Second. Ms. Uh, Sainz. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Thank you. Andale, <laughs> 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 <laughs>